Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon and also our visitors online. So you miss the good cake, by the way, people online, and, uh, and the nice tea. <laughs> uh, so today what we're going to do is we're going to hear from uh, uh, two speakers and myself, Beverly Poole. I'm Director of Skills Labs Business Centres for Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. Um, and uh, but I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of how this afternoon is going to look. So in a moment, we're going to hear from Debbie Lavin, uh, CBE, who is the principal here at college. Um, following Debbie will be um, uh, David Taylor, uh, who's our digital consultant on this project. Um, and then finally, I'll come back and talk to you about the Skills Labs project. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, we're not expecting a fire alarm. But if there are any uh, fire alarm sounds, we've got the two exits at either side of the front here. Um, and so also, if you need to use the loo, there's one outside here as well. So that's uh, sort of thing, I think, about me done, really. So I'm going to pass you over to Debbie Lavin to come and talk to you about uh, the overview of this project. Thank, Thank you, Debbie. You, <coughs> First to say thank you to Beverly and welcome to you all as employers, uh, both online and in the room. And I really, really appreciate you giving up time for your business. And what I'd like to start to do before I talk about Skills Labs and the white paper is just to reflect back on the last two years. So during COVID, and it's particularly poignant for, for David's presentation, we all had to stop move our business online and things were very, very different. And what this project's about, most companies did that eloquently, so well done you. And what the project's about is being able to move fleet of foot, ensure that we're helping you and supporting you in the skills. And that was a good example where life moves very quickly and we have to adapt and adopt. And then if you're watching the current news at the moment, the awful things going on in Russia and Ukraine, I am almost sure every single business in the land will be impacted by that, whether it's rising bill prices, or it's your supply chain. And again, you're going to have to move and adapt. And this Skills Lab project will help you to do that. And a little bit closer to home, and which is uh, our last presenter, Astrid, was talking about, is net zero. That is a government uh, strategy. <clears throat> There's different dates. You as companies will have to respond to that, the same as I need to do as a company. And Skills Lab will enable us to develop the skills to do that. And if you're watching Greta Thunberg, who's a, a, a great advocate for Net Zero, she is like many of our students, we're pushing on an open door. So the younger generation are very, very interested in digital. They're interested in Net Zero. They get it probably better than most of us in the room. But again, this is where Skills Lab can help you. And the very last thing in terms of what's going on strategically is the Freeport. I came off a call last night uh, about the Freeport, and if you're a business in the room or online, it's incredibly exciting. So it's about businesses moving into that Freeport area. There'll be tax reductions for you and all sorts of benefits. So if you don't know anything about that, you can either talk to us or the council or the LEP, and you'll get some more information about that. But please don't let that one pass you by because it's a win-win. Now, there's seven colleges in this project, and we're all working together for your benefit. So what's happened is the government have introduced a paper, a white paper in January 2021, called Skills for Jobs, Lifelong Learning for Opportunity and Growth. So really, really good read. <clears throat> but what that's to do is, is our government skills scan all over the world and in Europe, and they watch Germany in particular, because Germany is kind of streets ahead of us on a technical front. So after the war, they were able to upskill, use a technical education system that's enabled their businesses to do very, very well and productivity to be high. And I am really pleased that our government has decided to adopt that strategy. So what this is about is the government saying it's an ambitious white paper <clears throat> is that we'll put the employers at the heart of everything we do. So rather than us um, keep saying this is a curriculum, what do you want to buy? Today is about <clears throat> listening to you, gaining feedback and saying, OK, what skills do you need and how do we respond to that? It's about higher technical qualifications. 
So we will be offering something called T-levels. Um, oh, that's got a bit wobbly, hasn't it? We'll be offering something called T-levels, which will then lead in the benefit views to a, a, an employer is that you will be able to take our students on a significant work placement. And that's about 315 hours over two years. And then the government wants us to adopt and adapt to offer higher level technical skills. So there'll be technical skills at level four and five. There'll be higher level apprentices. I know at the moment this skills accelerator program is focusing on marine, net zero and digital. But Begley may talk a little bit later about uh, what other programmes will come on board. We also will be offering a range of qualifications, different levels, the funding and the money all come together. And if you've been watching the TV, then you will note that there's a national campaign trying to get teachers back into um, colleges. So the whole of the government paper is about capital investment, it's about equipment investment, and it's about investment in teachers and trying to upskill them. And it's a two way thing. So then we have skills labs and you might think, well, what's one of those? We're having one here. There's one being built at um, Fairham College with the Hampshire Chamber, Chamber of Commerce playing a part in that. And it is about innovation, collaboration and evolution. So going back to COVID, I think we did that brilliantly. I thought all business innovated. We all collaborated on this project and the government is saying to colleges, you have to and we'll, we will wish to collaborate so that when you as an employer come to us and say, well, all these colleges offer the same thing and I want this and none of you offer that, all of that will change within this project. So it really, really is quite exciting. We'll also listen to you today. So I know Beverly wants you to do uh, part of the feedback is any questions you've got and there will be a survey for you to complete. And then we're looking to serve our whole business Solent community. And that is a really big value added because Beverly will show you later a chart where all the colleges cover the whole Solent. So that can only benefit you as a set of businesses. So what are the pilots about? Within the seven colleges, we have upward of 20,000 16 to 18 year olds that you can tap into. That's a huge amount of workforce that could be yours for the taking. We have upward of 20,000, sorry, 16 to 18 year olds. We have a third of those who enter your workplace already. To me, the question is, why is it a third, not two thirds? So if you come to talk to us and collaborate with us, we can shift the emphasis from that third to two thirds. We have approximately 5,000 apprentices who are there for you to work with or to offer an apprenticeship framework to. And also at the moment, the adult training and all the funding is coming together so adults can retrain or upskill. They do not have to do a qualification. <laughs> There's something very useful to you called a boot camp where you can uh, either send people along or people from the community can come along and those people can train, retrain without the requirement for a qualification. And to me, that has been the first time ever and can only be a win. And then we've got a whole infrastructure of capital coming together. So our government is putting their money where their mouth is. So for the first time this year, rather than report to my governors were a million pound down on income, we will be 1.3 million up. That's lots of pair of shoes for a girl like me. So we're really, really pleased with that. Um, and it just shows it feels really supportive. And a lot of that funding is for employers. <clears throat> so what have we done? What are, what are our four things we set out to achieve? We have two business centres, which will cost uh, an investment of about 850,000. There are skills labs. We have a project too where we've been given 2.2 million for equipment and that's never been heard, not in my lifetime of uh, education. So you get the capital infrastructure, normally that's it. We've now got the equipment, we're able to do the curriculum planning with you. And then the very last part of the project is how do we upskill our staff and create sustainability in the sector? So one of the most exciting things going on, the seven projects, 
will come together. We may pay one post circa 100,000 because it's a very difficult to reach skill and we can't usually provide. But if the seven can contribute and buy a heavyweight technical expert, then we can start to respond to you in a better way. So that feels really exciting. So obviously there's targets. What have we achieved so far? We've had 282 staff out on uh, secondment in business upskilling. We need 360 by the end of April, so we're doing really, really well. We're pleased with that. We've had 76 teaching staff out on knowledge transfers. And what we're finding is businesses are coming in saying, we have this basic <coughs> kit and we really do need your staff to understand it's there and it's new, latest technology, not something we've been using from 1802. That's working really, really well for us as well. And we've had the 76 out on that. The 2.2 investment, you can imagine, as quick as the money came in, we bought everything we ever wanted. And the kit we are buying uh, represents all the agendas today. So it's things like ground source heat pumps, electrical and hybrid vehicles, simulation technologies, robotics, mechatronics, and a huge amount of digital capability in software development. And digital is one of the biggest skills requirements our employers are telling us that they need um, development in. So that, that feels really good for us. So what's today about? It's pulling the strands all together and making sure it's a long-term ambitious project. So the project is short-term. It finishes at the end of March. We've asked for an extension to that. But at the end of it, if we have managed to get the SMEs, the small business community, back engaging with us, as well as all the other employees who do work well, it's about focus. So it's really nice for once to be able to focus on marine and digital and net zero. That will expand, but for now it gives you a focus and it's really helpful. We will have a broader reach to support, support regional economic development. So as you will have noticed, I'm a Northern lass. All we ever hear about in education is the Northern powerhouse. They need the resource, they need the money. That isn't true. I wouldn't wish them to do them out of that, but the Isle of Wight, Gosport mm. and haven't as high levels of deprivation. They need our help, they need our support. And the levelling up agenda matched to this government white paper is about giving all those people all over the country the opportunities to upskill, reskill and to meet your needs as employers. So thank you for listening. I'd now like to encourage our key speaker up here. So could you give a very warm welcome to David? Thank you very much. Right. Almost things in order. Right. Let's hope this fabulous. Right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, and thank you for that um, excellent introduction. Um, so I am the uh, digital futures lead for Skills Lab, and. Um, a uh, little bit about me is, is I've actually come from a communications background, um, but what it's done is it's enabled me to go into uh, business advisory. Um, uh, and I'm currently working with um, Solent, LEP. I'm working with Southampton City Council. Um, I'm also working with another, uh, a number of other um, uh, growth hubs and LEPs. And what has become really evident to me over the last few years of working, certainly working with SMEs, I, I think over the last 14 months I've worked with upwards of 130 or 140 SMEs, is that digital is a huge issue, um, but it's also can be quite confusing as well. You hear the word, you know, all of you in here will probably have a different definition of digital. So. I thought that if we're going to be talking about digital futures, let's think, well, what on earth is a digital future and what does this mean? So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So what are digital futures? <clears throat> so this is a my little roadmap showing what I think are the key uh, digital elements of what business 
um, will be needing. Uh, it is pretty vast, um, and I'm going to talk you through just some of them. So we've got metaverse. Anyone, hands up here who's, who has heard of a metaverse? Does anyone actually understand what a metaverse is? But a metaverse is where effectively someone creates their own version of a universe for themselves. It's, it's the next element of Facebook. So Facebook renamed them as, themselves as Meta, and they bought up and they're going to be investing heavily in virtual reality. So effectively, you can create different worlds. So we could have a situation where we would have a virtual form of Newport, where you could walk down the virtual high street in Newport. You could then go into a virtual shop, talk to a virtual shop assistant, and you would be able to try, let's say, for example, if it was a men's tailors, um, you would be able to get your digital twin. This is another thing up here. Your digital twin would effectively model the suit. You would watch yourself modeling the suit. You could then check out if you like that. And then potentially a drone could then deliver the actual suit to your home. So a lot of that tech, all that technology is actually here now. We've got augmented reality, which is, is, is linked to that. We've got, uh, so again, coming back to the digital twin element, this is effectively where you create a virtual form of yourself. But that could include also you, all your medical records. So effectively, if you had an ailment, then doctors would be able to give you some, your digital twin a treatment and then measure how that would perform. Therefore, you start having tailored medicine, um, which is a, a very interesting thing. We've got um, AI. So how many people understand algorithms? Hands up who understand algorithms. So Mary, you're not allowed because you're, you're, Mary is one of my clients, so he's not. <laughs> um, algorithms, everything, every single thing that we see online today, all of us is governed by machine learning. It's not, it, it's, so we don't control it. So coming back to the dreadful news happening in Ukraine, we're constantly having to think, is this real? And is this being served up properly? Um, and um, many business owners don't realize that they aren't in control of the message and they aren't in control of how people see themselves online. It's all controlled by algorithms. But everything, Netflix, iPlayer, LinkedIn, TikTok, everything is algorithmic. And the algorithms are getting more and more and more focused. And it's getting more. Uh, how many, many of you probably watch Black Mirror? You know, Black Mirror, the reason it's so creepy, it's so close to actually reality. And the algorithms, there's one particular one where the algorithm decides people's love lives. And there's one particular episode where, where, where the, the, the machine basically tells them who to date. Um, and it says that it's 99% accurate. 99.9% .9 accurate, which means that one in a thousand it isn't. And this particular couple are the one in a thousand. They break break out and go, go over the wall. So you've got lots and lots of elements here. You've got Alphabet, who own Google. You've got <laughs> Meta. Um, Microsoft obviously bought LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a data house. Um, you've got, I mean, data is such a key, key element um, in digital. So if, if you have something in digital, it is effectively a code of noughts and ones. And that is a, a, if almost everything can be then reduced down to a data point. And in many ways, virtually every organization and business is data driven. So this college will be data driven. You'll have a series of data integers, which you'll focus on, which will then you'll deliver a learning process off the back of it. If you have a mortgage business, it's a face effectively a data business, which is specializing in mortgages. Even if you had a garden center, it's still down to data. And, the, and, and uh, in terms of future skills, the ability to synthesize and use data in an intelligent way is clearly going to be another big, big employment area. And I would say within 
three or four years, most small medium companies will have a data analyst working in that business. Why? Because there is so much data to synthesize. So again, one of the things I talk about with my clients uh, is if they have a website, do you look at your analytics? The analytics is obviously owned by Alphabet. So by, if you have Google Analytics in your website, effectively you are saying to, to Alphabet, Google, you can have all the data of my website. And of course, if you've got millions of websites, it makes Alphabet very, very, very powerful because knowledge is power and data is power now. So that's just, those are a, a, a few of the, the digital futures as I see it. Now, um, there will be businesses on the Isle of Wight who are involved in areas of this. And that's particularly why we're, we're interested in with, with skills labs to try and see what skills provision we need. But then we start thinking, OK, well, those are the digital futures. What about the actual human beings? Because we are still human beings. Um, and what we've got is a um, multi-generational workplace um, and country. And it's when we're looking at skills provision, we're thinking about what skills do different generations need? and what skills are di different generations lacking. So for the purposes of today, we can probably discount veterans because veterans aren't really going to be um, in the, the mix. However, there will be business owners on the Isle of Wight who are baby boomers and Gen Xers and millennials. So that that's that that then we're looking at the business owners, but we're equally looking at the employees in those businesses. Now, if we start thinking about baby boomers and Gen X, you've got a huge proportion of the staff in those businesses who just don't get digital. They are flummoxed by their phone. They don't understand CRM, smart CRM systems. They don't understand how the computer works and the latest version of Excel. <laughs> And they are struggling. And I've worked with a number of uh, businesses where the, the staff are really struggling with the tech because there's a younger generation, which is on the left-hand side of this equation, who just get it naturally. Well, you just press that and do that, and then that, that works. And it's like, whoa, 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 why, why does that do that? I don't understand. It doesn't do that for me. So you've got staff doing that. You've got parents doing that. You've got grandparents doing that. I would just say to my mum, she says, well, David, how, how does this thing work? I said, mum, just go and figure it out for yourself. That is probably the best thing to do. So you've got, so you've got on this right-hand side, so you'll notice 1980 is a pivotal year. Um, those born before 1980 are old school and remember a pre-digital world. And therefore, the way their brains are wired is um, in an analog fashion. And the way they consume the way they communicate, the way they understand, the way they learn is all very much driven. The education system was, so I, I, can, I can say I still took O-levels. I squeezed in second last year of O-levels. And what was being taught at O-levels is totally different to GCSEs and T-levels and all those things now. You still had CSEs and O-levels then. Um, and so that's the right hand side of the equation, which is which is great. So we're, we're thinking about skills provision for existing people within businesses. But then we flip over to the other side, pre so those born after 1980. And by the way, those questioning well, what happens if you were born in 1980? Well, you are a zenial. A zenial means that you, you, you straddle both sides of the equation, so to speak. But. On the left hand side, and so we're looking really at 40s and under, then you've got a very different perception of the world. So the skill sets are different, the learning is different, the um, pathways are different, the communications is different, the channels you use are different, the language you use is different, the user experience is different. Um, and what we know, I mean, again, from, from when I've been working with a lot of businesses, there is almost a dismissal out of hand of under 35s. They're absolutely useless, bunch of snowflakes. 
um, can't use a phone, can't present, can't write, don't have any numeracy. And it's like, OK, so we're just going to write off half the workforce. So well, that's really helpful. They ain't going to change, though. That's the thing. These people have grown up in a digital world. That's the way they operate. Um, and yes, they do lack some soft skills that older people have, for example, presentation, for example, being able to read long bits of text rather than short form bits of content. Um, so but it's a question of can we then harness their skills? What we we are actually facing, unfortunately, a, a terrible double negative. So on one hand, we've got mostly men of a certain age, my age, so it's basically I am the problem, um, is 50 something <laughs> men who run businesses, run organizations, who just don't get the modern world. They don't get digital, they don't get um, the changes required. And, and one of the phrases I use, we are in a VUCA world, volatile, unpredictable, chaotic, and anarchic. So if you're in this world, but it's like, no, no, we've done it since 1805. <laughs> I think you use it. So uh, we've done it this way and we know everything and you can't tell us. And so therefore, they're, as, as men, and it's interesting, I said well, the 130, 140 businesses, the people who've been voluntarily signing up to those programs have been women because women want to learn. And if they don't know something, they, they, they ask. So we've got this negative where we've got business owners who are stubbornly holding on to old ways of working because that's what they do. And they'd rather drive the bus over the cliff than admit that they're lost. Um, but then you've also got all the youngsters who are out of work or have no idea, no clear idea. What One of the one of the businesses I've spoken to in Skills Labs um, was saying that, that there is a generation coming through who have no clue about what they're going to do in terms of employment, not a clue at all. So there's a real piece there of, of, of communications and, and communicating certain industries and, and, and those industries not selling themselves very well. So you've got loads of um, highly digitally savvy youngsters not having a clue what to do with their lives or out of work and or and, and i hate to say it there is a generation who's been really badly damaged by covid because they're very anxious that they're, they're not that they've their education has been completely disrupted so they're at home or they've got no clue what to do and you've got older business owners who are driving their proverbially driving their business over a cliff it's a double negative flip it round and that's what I what I'm excited about with Skills Labs. You flip it round and say, OK, so there's all these youngsters with digital skills. You've got all these oldies who understand innately how business works and what is needed to happen. Bring the two together. That's what Skills Labs all around. So it's always understanding that there are different generations and the skill sets needed. So if, if we start even flipping all the way around, to Generation Alpha. So Generation Alpha, they live in a world of 5G, of touchscreen, of, of connected technology. They have no concept of dial-up, even. <laughs> if you showed them a BlackBerry from 2006, <laughs> it would be like watching me watching a Charlie Chaplin film. Oh, isn't that quaint? <laughs> Didn't they? Funny how they used to do it. So um, I've got kids. I've got uh, two boys, 13 and 15. So they are they are Generation Z. I'm not going to say Generation Z because we're British. We don't say <laughs> Z. So Generation Z. And um, they the, just the way they think and act. So they're, the, they're, they're almost like the gamified generation. So my boys are, are gamers. I have to say, though, my 13-year-old, is also a massive fan of buying vinyl. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, his, some of his music taste is the same as mine, which is slightly questionable. It's like bizarre. So you're listening to the sort of music your grandparents were getting into or um, grooving to, I should say. So then we've got jobs of the future. So we've got some interesting jobs now. I, uh, Shibby Jervis, um, any of you who are on Twitter or want to, to find out, She's a uh, she's a, a futurologist, if you like. I took this picture at Facebook 
um, in Dublin a, a, a number of years ago now. But if we look at some of these jobs of the future, and again, if if I'd been speaking here 15 years ago and I'd said, oh, a big growth area in media will be community manager. What the hell is a community manager? Do they go into the community and help people and manage people's lives? Community managers, obviously, people whose job it is to live within social networks and manage them. It's a huge area, massive, massive area of media didn't exist. Those jobs now, personal memory curator, that job already exists. So all of us have data, personal data, which is pictures or videos, and they could be on funny old cameras in the back of the cupboard and video cameras, which you can't find the lead to charge it anymore. And you've got little tiny tapes. And you've got old phones and you've got blackberries and all these pictures. So if you had a personal memory creator, if they could bring it together in one place where you'd be able to access, that's what personal memory creating. This robot human interaction counselor, we've got we've talked about hybrid working, but you've also got hybrid systems of communication where you've got online platforms, but then real human beings who are uh, on the ground delivering. So we know that those are jobs of the future. Those jobs of the future will all require skill sets. So again, the, one of the businesses I spoke to is an IT company. And we think those of us of a certain age think IT, it's the, the boffin under the stairs who know how to fix your computer when it didn't work. And it's like he'll switch it off and switch it back on again and say, there you go, it works. That's what people thought of IT. Now, IT now has changed into a radically different type of profession where it's problem solving, it's data driven, it's, it's understanding networks and, and offline and online experience and user and stuff like that. Therefore, the skill sets are changing dramatically, which also means that there should be more women coming into IT rather than at the moment where it's seen as a male only profession. So those are the jobs of the future. So how are they affecting business now? So like it or not, we are in a digital world. And almost um, if, I'm, if I'm a business advisor, I try and remove the word digital because we are in a digital world. So ergo, everything we do is then digital. So you say, oh, I'm in, I'm in digital marketing. No, you're in marketing. I'm in social media sales. No, you're in sales. So everything we do is to some extent driven by data and it's driven by digital and therefore if businesses on the isle of wight are going to have successful sustainable long-term futures then they're going to have to grasp large elements of digital processes it's not just about digital communications it's about digital processes as well i always think that digital transformation has got two elements to it. It's digital transformation through process and digital transformation through communications. Communications now, at the end of the day, businesses are set up to communicate with human beings. There could be all sorts of different human beings for all sorts of different reasons, but ultimately your job is to communicate with other human beings. How you do that, that is uh, affected by digital. But so many areas, you, you might have a florist in ride and said, oh, I'm a florist. Of course, I'm not a digital business. No, you're not a digital business, but you're a business operating in a digital world. Therefore, your invoicing system, your customer <laughs> relations system, your CRM system, your, your marketing is all driven to some extent. So if you've got a mobile phone, you take pictures of your flowers and you then post it on Instagram, that means you are doing digital processes. So uh, if, we, if business on the island is going to have a successful future, then there need to be digital processes there. And there needs to be an education of business owners specifically, because they need to understand that, no, you can't just carry on in the same old way. There is no business as usual anymore. And I, I'm coming back to your point about, it'd be shame if we then went back to a almost the pre-COVID where people say, over my dead body, will you work from home? And it's like, oh, everyone's been working from home for two years and it seems to be more efficient now. And we've saved a lot of money. So don't send everyone back to the to, to the offices. Um, so that's, that is where we're at. Um, 
I, uh, as a, uh, a digital futures lead, I am wanting to go into the businesses who are in the business of digital themselves. So some, you know, whether it's app development or if they're in a um, some sort of social media capacity or they are doing 3D printing. And it's about understanding what what are the skills gaps there, but equally then trying to as I said, bring together these different generations, all of whom, you know, to a certain extent, it's always been the case that the young have this ebullience and youthfulness and drive and creativity, and the older people are like, ah, I can't be bothered, I've been there, done it, and got it. So I think it's really trying to, that's why I'm so excited about Skills Labs, because we are trying to bring the different generations together. But also what I recognize in this country is that the, the approach to skills learning um, post-education is, is awful. And you've got all these businesses who stop their learning the day they leave college. And there might be mostly men again who may not have learned anything new for 30 years. And they're stubbornly holding on to, well, I don't need it. I never needed it before. I remember when mobile phones, I never needed a mobile phone before. So why do I need one now? I never had a computer. Why do I need one now? I never had email. Why do I need one now? And so it's it for me, it's absolutely critical that Skills Labs works because it's a great way of bringing together the different generations and then understanding how we can learn from each other and then see what provision we need for the future for the skills. That is me. Done, Beverly. Over to you. Thank you very much. It's always really insightful when you talk, David. Um, if you want to hear a little bit more from David, actually, um, there's some work that we did together um, a couple of years ago online um, at the start of um, COVID, uh, at the pandemic, talking about digital futures and how companies could actually use digital to help their businesses at the start of, uh, of that pandemic, which is actually really interesting because at the time it's like working from home, wasn't it? People went, no, 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 no. But all the things David and I spoke about at that point have actually now come true. So, um, and what we've got now is the perfect opportunity to actually to start to implement that. So, um, so hello everybody and hello online. It's uh, Beverly Poole here and I'm Director of uh, Skills Labs Business Centre School, Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. And I'm just going to quickly whiz you through the Skills Accelerator programme, which is actually born from the white paper that uh, Debbie was talking about at the start. So that white paper identified that we need some technical skills training. Uh, which was built on the German model. We're not quite as technical yet here in the UK as we as we are there, but we have now got the opportunity to look at T levels, uh, which is giving uh, younger students the opportunity um, to develop um, their technical skills and also take that into the workplace. Slightly different way of doing things in apprenticeships, which is where they go into work and then come out for a day release or a get a job coach to go in. So there's so much opportunity um, uh, moving forward. So the Skills Accelerator Programme created a Skills Accelerator Fund. And what that fund did was enabled us to look at ways that we could start to develop this, um, this skills training and educational development across Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. So the two business centres that we've got, you can see on this uh, poster here. The one at the top is the one uh, that, uh, which is where I'm based, which is at Fairham. And then there is the, um, the business centre, which is going to be here uh, at the Isle of Wight College, which is just down the road um, on this road here. I think it's next building along, isn't it, Dave? Upstairs, is it? It is. Got All right. <laughs> <laughs> so when I came on board um, in November, I thought, how am I going to do this? Because um, it was quite a, quite a tough order until March. Um, and um, that was the sort of the timeframes that we were given. And uh, because we've actually created so much so soon, um, and there are 10 other projects like this throughout the UK um, that haven't uh, met quite as much of the criteria. So they've actually extended out the funding opportunity until the end of this year. So it's not foot off the ga uh, gas for us. It's actually foot that right down on the pedal and keep going. What's the point of easing up now when we've got this far? So phase one for me was get set and go. So to create the brands what that would look like, what we were actually going to do and how we were going to create a website 
a build awareness, make a lot of noise so that companies would actually know that we were here uh, delivering what I've been um, talking about for quite a long time, which is business informing education, which is the way it needs to go. So, um, so why did they call me in? Because I have experience of working in business in London in the city. Um, I set up a company which was purchased by one of the P&O group, uh, set up one of the first interactive technology companies uh, for the Chrysalis group, which is Chrysalis Interactive Technology, um, and also did quite a large uh, piece of work for uh, Black Horse, Motorola, and a few other companies in the day. Um, and uh, I then spent 10 years in education and then moved back into business um, when I felt that my children were old enough for me to, to do that. So the, the um, point I made earlier today was that if I'd have known all the information that I actually gained from doing um, uh, study in early childhood, which is sort of like a, a, a developmental psychology type uh, qualification, is if I'd have known all that and I could apply it to the business background that I had, how much better it would have been for all those people to look at their careers and actually to build it forwards for them so that they could get a really good understanding of their personal development and requirements also within a business. So I think I've got a unique um, opportunity to bring together that business and educational sector uh, to help companies to, uh, to, to actually to grow their, their career opportunities, succession planning, uh, troubleshooting L&D in larger corporates, that type of thing, or starting from scratch with, with new companies. <laughs> so um, the second part of this then was to um, organise events, um, make awareness, and we have now created a database with over 550 companies on it, uh, which is a clean database. And to date, we've engaged about 190 companies who we will be talking to, um, carrying out some one-to-one -one discussion about the futures, et cetera. Um, and then three, which is the next bit that comes from this, which is the surveys that we're going to ask you to carry out for us. Um, and uh, same for the people online. Uh, will be a questionnaire about skills development and the types of skills you think your industry might need for the future. So that will then um, feed back to us what we need to know so that we can start creating opportunities um, in businesses. I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, I was talking to BAE um, Marine um, uh, and they are procurement training department saying that they wouldn't take, be able to fulfill their order book in the next five years because they had 200 skill shortages. So that's quite a big piece of work for me to be able to go in with my business head on, taking people from apprenticeships and adult learning uh, with me to those meetings and with our consultant to say, what is it that we actually need to do to get the knowledge of the guy over there in his brown overalls into the future and to create um, a workforce that's fit for purpose and ena enables the economic development of that, of that company. Um, um, and another one was um, yesterday, in fact, when we were talking to a, um, a, a Tubsud who do the um, testing and compliance for lots of products. Um, and we had to look at their great big uh, rooms which are like padded cells that they can fit tanks in and everything um, and see the resistance of some products. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, and uh, same again, we've had loads of people come in, we've lost 40 people over COVID, et cetera, et cetera. So we're looking at how we can give them a test, if you like, so we can give them like 10, uh, 10 trainees, uh, they can have them free of charge, and the trainees will know that there's three apprenticeships at the end of that program. So there's something in it for the client. There's something in it for the students because they'll be able to see that. But also in that company are adults that can be upskilled. So the adult upskilling budget is also there at the moment. So if people have never uh, carried out a level three technical qualification, they can actually we can actually look at that for them. Um, and we've got deep pockets with adult funding as well at the moment. So there's quite a lot we can do. And this is what we hope to do, which is number four at Skills Labs Business Centres is people will be able to come along. They'll be able to talk to us about their business needs whether they're that pillar of brand new businesses with innovation, whether they're the group of SMEs that need to grow, their needs are totally different, or whether we're troubleshooting in the large corporates. 
So all three sizes of business on the Isle of Wight will be welcome to come along to our Skills Lab Business Centre um, and we will be able to help you to, uh, to develop that and just to discuss your industry um, needs. Um, just pop forward a moment. So here's, here's our buildings and we've got the seven colleges, which I'll just show you first, of all, which Debbie mentioned uh, just now. So we've got the, the Isle of Wight, we've got Brockenhurst College, City College in Southampton. Uh, we've got Eastley College, uh, Fairham College, which is where I'm based, Portsmouth City and Haverton South Downs. Now, the thing is about all this as well is with digital. I was talking to the Forley plant. Um, and they were saying, what we need now is something totally different that we're going to need in three years' time. I'm having the same conversation all the time with companies um, who are, uh, you know, sort of looking at their own skills needs. So there's a fantastic opportunity here, look, because we're all by the waterside, uh, which is um, um, other areas that we're looking at this morning with, with Marie. So the seven colleges then have all got their own facilities and on our website will have their best bits, the talking head of the principal, um, and that's all due for, uh, for completion by March. And on our website, we will have all our events, business clinics, one, one at each of our colleges each month. And we'll also be able to put your opportunities on there of any jobs that you've got that you can't fill, any apprenticeships or traineeships that you might want to run for your business. Um, and it's a great big opportunity for us to be able to, to help you uh, to grow your business. What this website is, is a a neutral place for me to support the partners in our in our program so I'm not working for one of them I'm working for all of them um, and uh, what we will be doing there is to funnel information so if somebody's looking for something they will purely click on a link that will go straight through to that college website so there's got there's going to be no information on there no prices no product nothing it's going to be purely a place where people can go to look at the business part of their of their business if you like so hopefully we'll have that by the end of march so there's all our colleges and now we need your help so we would like to book um, a one-to-one -one appointment with our new potential clients if you like uh, or as the college calls them employers and what that will do is that will give us the opportunity to sort of find out a little bit more about your business and how we might be able to help. From today, we'll be asking you to carry out a survey. And if you have any contacts in your business that might need our help to enable you to do your business, please let us know about them, do an introduction, and we can then send out those uh, survey or the information to that particular company. Then we get the GDPR all right as well. So the industry boards that I'm going to set up are going to happen once a month for the three different areas that we're working in. So we want to talk about marine technology, underwater robotics, all those sorts of things. We want to talk about net zero, which is Astrid's uh, um, uh, uh, area that we were talking about just before lunch. Um, so that could be retrofit. It could be ground source heat pumps. How are we going to train the workforce of the future to do that? Um, and as David's pointed out with digital futures, connecting business with information, the example I gave earlier was with the Hampshire Constabulary we're working with at the moment, who are having an app developed from our T-level students. And uh, because before that it was on a spreadsheet or phone Doris and see if the room is free. So now it's all on an app and, uh, and they can do that themselves. Similarly with uniforms, <coughs> it costs £35,000 to kit out a new uh, a police con uh, constable. And with personal measuring, somebody inputs it onto a spreadsheet, it gets ordered, it comes back, it's all wrong, it's all a waste of money. So the idea of digitising systems in business is what we want to talk to people about. And we can help to do that by either upskilling your workforce or looking at the students that we've got that can have that as a work opportunity, work placement opportunity. So we'll have our industry boards once a month maybe in the afternoon at different locations we'll have dinner you've all had a lovely opportunity to see what the food is like at lunch um, and um, and be able to talk about the future in, inside those industries so it's really really exciting this skills accelerator program uh, that we're all pulling together with business with education with knowledge 
and we are funded until the end of this year to, to actually to create that programme. Um, if companies want to put together a programme of education, let's say for the next five years, I will sit down and happily put you together a programme of events that will help you to do that through recruitment campaigns, through putting your corporate videos on our systems at college, uh, by talking to you about succession planning, speaking to your L&D or HR function uh, to see where the holes are, exit interviews, how much it's costing you to bring in a new person if somebody leaves a replacement cost and see how we can actually pull that get together to, um, to enable a better future for, for the businesses that we're working with. So that's all I have to say is quite a lot as usual <laughs> and uh, would like to um, thank people online and those in the room and uh, just to open up to any questions that you might have from myself David or Debbie or anybody else from the college so online guests no anybody in the room fantastic must have been good <laughs> so I'd just like to say thank you so much to everybody for joining us online and I know one or two join later as I've just pinged over one or two um, contacts but we will be putting the um, the uh, recordings of this onto our YouTube channel so that you'll be able to watch it back from all three of our presentations today so thank you very much and uh, it's been an absolute pleasure thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.